ways yeah. that we can't really predict. No, it, it's almost like these two are brand new players. Honestly, like both of them, like pretty much starting out around the same time in Smash 4. Like these two players were the kids in Smash 4 that would show up to the tournament and then built themselves up to be top level players. Mm -hmm. It has been an amazing ride watching these two grow into the people they've become. I, I gotta say, you know, that that what you just described is the thing I miss most about events. Because as a TO myself, I have seen all of our top players start from like basically randoms and grow <laughs> over the years into what they are. Pandarian started out that way. Pokefen started out that way. Uh, actually, Pokefen came and he was pretty good. <laughs> just right off the bat. But... Uh, the growth that we've witnessed in all of these regions here is just inspiring. And two great examples of that growth going at it right now here in front of us. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. I have plenty of good memories of these two players being the younger portion of Smash and just really enjoying themselves. But now they get to enjoy themselves here at the Invitational Online with Lucina and, of course, L against Luigi, which no really no big surprise from the pick of uh, Charlie. He's gonna want to pick a character that can zone out um, yeah. Luigi as best he can. But as you can see, as soon as the grab comes out, that's a stock. Elegant, so proficient with those follow-ups. Uh, Luigi obviously gets a lot of flack for being like a oh, zero to death machine, but there's a lot this character can do regardless of the percent the opponent's at. And Elegant has definitely mastered all those tricks. Oh, for sure. If there's one player, one Luigi in the world that has mastered them all, it's going to be elegant. I do also agree with you. I like this character pick a lot from Charlie. Uh, Luigi struggles the most when he can't kind of get in to your face. And Lucina, she's got a big sword, gonna make that a hard task for just about anyone. But elegant, really not having too much trouble right now. No, unfortunately, just Charlie's just guessing incorrectly. We've seen him actually like kind of cross up Elegant a couple of times, uh, throwing out these attacks at the ledge, and they're just not connecting. And even when he goes for a cross up, uh, Elegant like kind of drifts back a little bit, and then he just lands. Charlie lands right in front of Elegant. Then we see grab happen, and then you know what happens after that. Mm -hmm. Charlie does manage to get the stock, but uh, he didn't get through that unscathed. He's on his last legs already and elegant still pretty healthy if he can dodge an edge guard attempt here which he does yeah resorting to the tornado which of course has that intangibility or that invulnerability on the way down while he's spinning very difficult to to deal with um and we're gonna see elegant using that from high recoveries mm -hmm. it's a great get out of jail for well not not totally free but it's it's an escape option luigi has at his disposal uh can be very difficult for certain players to challenge him in the air and he's got a tool like that on deck. And speaking of other tools Luigi has at his disposal, that plunger, that falling plunger from the grab, took Charlie's last stock. And it seems really irritating for Lucina to try and get around. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course, you know, having that vertical recovery, which um, doesn't have the, uh, the invulnerability mechanic that it used to, uh, it does make you susceptible to that to that plunger falling on your head, resetting yeah. your recovery. It's, that's just it's gonna a great move, Lucina up B, but it always tries to go in kind of the same spot. And if you can just drop things on that spot, she's going to have a hard time with it. Yeah. Yep, couldn't have said it better myself. And of course, Elegant being as proficient as in his main as he is, if you get grabbed at any percent, that could definitely lead to a stock. We saw, we haven't seen an early the early percent grab just yet, but we've seen it enough times to know how it goes. And but yeah. the <laughs> elegant getting those mid percent grabs, the high percent grabs, and still taking stocks off them. Mm -hmm. You are not safe against a character like this. Any kind of grab can lead to major damage. There's tons of different ways Luigi can actually follow up what you're trying to do there. We saw that last stock, elegant pulling out something else, following Charlie straight up and using the up B to finish the game off in pretty yep. stylish fashion. So Which at Charlie's got a... is, uh, is actually true. All right, there you go. Actually true. <laughs> Luigi is, uh, he's got a lot of stuff. Got some stuff. But you know who else has some stuff? Wolf. Yeah, and now that we have a, of 
course, Charlie going to the wolf. Obviously, the incorrect stage being chosen here. But now that Charlie ha does have access to his wolf, he has access to his blaster. So if Elegant ever wants to sit back and chuck fireballs, Charlie can answer right back with a better projectile. Uh, and we actually saw Charlie using that blaster to recover in the set against Grandmaster earlier a couple times. He would fire out a blaster preemptively to force Grandmaster to shield or take some chip damage when Grandmaster was trying to set up an edge guard. So Elegant might not be able to drop those plungers as consistently or as frequently if Charlie's got the blaster on deck there. Yeah, definitely not for free. He'll have to either pay the price, which is about, I think it's like seven to 10 damage. Yeah. Or he'll have to give up ledge pressure, which Elegant is not a fan of. No one wants to give up ledge pressure for free. Nope. All right, so the proper stage here is going to be Kalos. All right, Charlie, a fan of this stage for reasons that we sort of saw on display last set. Oh, uh, and here's... Oof. Able to escape. All right, Charlie, get that away. Grab. <laughs> oh, man. That 0% that grab is so scary. <laughs> yep. All right, okay. but you know what? Uh, Charlie didn't let it get to him because he has turned the tables right around here, and he's... Wow. All right, I guess... Did yeah, Elliot's no... jump get eaten there? Yeah, no second jump. I think he got eaten up by a, a soft nair. You really just saw Charlie not even staying at the ledge at that point. He knew that Elegant was dead. Yeah. And here we go. There's the wow. rinse and repeat at the ledge. Getting uh, hit with back airs plenty of times. Of course, Charlie being a space, he has to know how to attack, but also mixing in the, the coin games as well, which, if you're not ready for that, that'll just make you fall straight to the, straight into the blast mm -hmm. zone. And this is the kind, I mean, I, I just saw right there, obviously Luigi's Tornado doesn't work quite the same as it did in Smash 4, but I saw shades of his old offstage aggression right there. Oh, for sure. Like, just having that active hitbox cover the ledge, which is really where most players want to go for protection, uh, is very difficult. It's, it's hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Oh, Mixing up the up tilts. He knew that he wasn't going to get the zero to death, so in fact, he mixed up with the up tilt, putting Charlie high above him and then extending the damage that much further. Yep. And Charlie keeps trying to edge guard Elegant, but Elegant seems to be pulling the trigger a little too early for him to land the hits that Charlie's looking to land. Like we saw the, the green missile interrupt one of those attempts because Elegant just released it a little bit early. <laughs> Uh, and he, he loses the stock as I am breaking this down because these players very aggressive, but uh, it's geez, this is this is a ridiculous set. I can't, I can't even get yep. over. No, 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 no. That's and that's why that's why I was saying like Charlie, of course, being an aggressive player uh, in the last game against Grandmaster, that was a slugfest. This one is going to be no exception because guess what? These are both these are both very aggressive players. Elegant has his moments where he's going to pull back and try and force his opponent to approach by chucking fireballs or zoning out with plungers. But at the same time, he wants to get the grab. He wants to hit his opponent so he can get those high damage combos. And Charlie is no exception to that as well. These, these are definitely both players who will go after the high reward option. Oh, definitely. High risk, high reward. Could not have a better play style that, um, that really explains the way these two play. All right, Elegant fights his way off the platform. We saw a lot of stocks get taken from Wolf Bear there before. Uh, not gonna happen this time, at least in this one interaction here. Elegant does get to ledge, no tech chase for Charlie there, but they're both on shaky ground and is the plunger no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> able, we were to escape, plunger kill. able to escape with the wolf flash and that was the reversal that Charlie needed, putting himself back on Kalos. And the F tilt from Wolf gonna clean up the game. Nice angle down there with the F tilt, hitting Luigi on ledge. Wolf F tilt really safe, strong, good option. Just like when you tell me like Think of a really good F tilt, just a general all purpose good F tilt. That's one of the ones I think of. So Kalos has worked out for Charlie twice now. This yeah, tournament. two for two. Yeah, uh, I have to think Elegant's not going to let him go back there. No, if I'm Elegant, we might see Pokemon Stadium. 
Or no. mm, okay. We might see uh, Smashville. They're thinking long and hard. Sometimes the stage does play a pretty big role. Yeah, I mean, we saw it kind of come in to play in the last match uh, on Kalos. Having access to those wall jumps allows Charlie to weave around the plunger that's coming right at him. Mm -hmm. And of course, being able to trap and retreat to those platforms. Which I, otherwise, I wouldn't whatever. be surprised if we saw Smashville. These two are thinking long and hard. Of course, no character switches from either player. At this point, I wouldn't expect to see Lucina anymore. Yeah. Now, so, Wolf already proved itself in ways that Lucina just was a little short of. So uh, I, I think we're going to see locked characters here. And we are... No, this is town. This is town and city. Interesting. This is actually surprising to me. I would not have expected elegance to be here. I think it's because of the, the FD transformation, honestly. Maybe, yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm going to be on the lookout for ways that this stage specifically helps Luigi or Elegant out here. And it might be a comfort kick too, but there's probably some specific reason he chose this that I'm just not aware of. I, I honestly think it's... coming to play if we watch. I... I honestly think it's because of the FD transformation that we're currently in. Charlie's not going to have any platforms to retreat to, uh, which is going to allow Elegant to really set up for those grab combos. And even if he does get a grab combo, it's going to give one Charlie one less out to escape. But That's no true. grabs come into play. Charlie's still zoning out and boxing out Elegant. And now we're starting to see the ledge traps. Oh, OK. You know, sometimes the mix-up is just raw F-Smash. And it worked out there. Uh, Elegant's still on the ropes at a pretty sizable percent deficit, but when you're both at triple digits, the deficit doesn't really matter. You can see the Tornado. Bring out the Tornado at the last second. And Down Smash is coming out just a little too slow to actually punish. All right, F-Tilt going to take the stock there for Charlie. And uh, this is just... This is extra credit zone. You know, get those free grab combos, uh, tack on some percent with Blaster, and just make Luigi's life hard. That's right. Back throw, and that should be the stock. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that uh, I think we've seen it like three times already that Elegant, once he starts getting um, heavily pressured by Charlie, um, he'll bring out the tornado. So if Charlie's taking note of that, which I'm sure he is, he may char um, start to pressure elegant into using a tornado and then just punish him really hard after but catching the roll with an s smash elegant taking a quick stock from charlie that King. was that was no luigi nonsense that was 100 just i'm gonna read your option really really hard okay there's another f smash but the falling there no tech chase from charlie though and, you know, I think that might have been in part because Elegant, like, didn't tech at all. He just kind of, like, fell on the ground and thudded and then rolled away. And sometimes not doing the option is a mix-up in itself. Yeah, there's that defensive tornado again, allowing, giving a, giving Elegant a little bit of relief from the pressure that Charlie's been outputting. Falling there, and then there it is again. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like Charlie needs to start baiting that out. He knows yeah, that he does. that is the defensive option that Elegant's going to choose whenever he's feeling pressured. Elegant hasn't been hard punished for it yet, so I understand why he keeps throwing it out. That should kill, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, very edge on town with that much rage. Elegant, pretty strong game three in his favor there. Uh, stage seemed to work out. He got what he wanted from it. Yep, uh, and we maybe. Working our way to another game five. I I Three, honestly two, wouldn't one, put it past these two. Yeah. Uh, Charlie's going to get a counter pick here, get some footing he's a little bit more comfortable on. And I think, as we saw in the previous game five, we might see more of those tricks coming out as the set progresses. Charlie might start hard punishing some of those elegant tornadoes. 
yeah, it's just really going to be how how is Charlie going to adapt? Because honestly, the defensive play from Elegant and forcing Charlie to approach, uh, while Charlie does have access to Blaster, we haven't really seen him abuse it yeah. against Elegant. Yeah, no, there hasn't been a lot of like distanced play here. They're always kind of just slugging it out right in each other's faces. Which I would think, and has based on what we've seen so far, is going to play out in Elegant's favor. That's exactly what this character wants. This character wants you to be up in their grill. Okay, dash attack, and that's going to put Charlie in the corner. Charlie, of course, looking for these falling forward airs so that he can convert. All right, this is the nice string here from Charlie, putting on an early percent lead and putting Elegant in a really scary spot off stage. Yeah, he, Charlie even had the read that you know Elegant was going to be forced to use his air dodge. Um, unfortunately, he drifted just a little bit too forward. Because uh, I'm pretty sure he wanted to just land a, either a, a Nair to keep Elegant off the ledge and then force him to like recover low or expend his double jump and then pressure him further. But still getting some little bit extra damage with the back air. And now we see, of course, these two players playing the ground game once again. Mm. Uh, really sizable lead for Charlie, but he's got to take this stock soon if he doesn't want to get reversal here. That rising Tornado is going to allow Elegant to get back on stage. And Elegant at this point has to be looking for the anti-air option. He knows that Charlie is going to try and fall on him. Oh, oh my! No. Are you kidding me? The equalizer of the green missile misfire coming into play from Elegant. Oh, that is that is the Luigi moment right there. That is one of the most tilting uh, series of events that can occur for a player. Absolutely. That's that's like. Not quite on the level of like thwack from Hero, but pretty close. <laughs> oh man, that's the down throw nine for for Luigi. Yep. The uh, Hail Mary that, oh, you man. know, I've seen it happen for Elegant more often than not. I'm almost positive that that boy knows how to summon it. I've he heard, knows how I've to think heard. like, I need you now, Misfire, come. <laughs> I've heard that the mark of a true Luigi man is when you know when the misfires are coming. So I believe that. Gets out the misfire materia and just summons the misfire. <laughs> oh man. Uh, you know, despite that extremely tilting stock loss there, Charlie has not let it affect his composure. And where, I mean, Elegant did just get edge guarded pretty, pretty handily there by Charlie, but this is still an even match. Yeah, but think about like what percent that edge guard occurred at. They were both in the red. Yeah. Like, to say that that stock was early, it wasn't. Harley had to go off stage. He got hit by Green Missile. He got he had to tech. He had to go extremely far off stage. And at that point, Elegant stock had already been used up. Mm -hmm. All right, once again, Elegant on the ropes. That is the trend of this game. You know, Green Missile accepted. <laughs> uh, Although, okay, yeah, Charlie does fight his way back there. Wolf Flash, whenever you have to rely on it, can be very scary because it doesn't really snap the ledge. But he was able to... Oh. Oh, oh gee. I, I thought it was going to misfire again, honestly. That's why I'm not a <laughs> Luigi main. <'cause> <laughs> yeah, you, you never know with these Luigi mains. But very, very good for, for Charlie. Able to block the tornado and now going falling off stage. Are we going to see the falling in there? Yep, that's... He's giving up the stock. Doesn't matter. Game's over. It was worth. It was yep. worth. Yep. Uh, when you're up like that, you gotta you gotta take those opportunities, especially because players like Elegant don't give them very often. Good step to Charlie, taking us to another game five. You were right. Love to see game five for every set Charlie's in. All of them, mm -hmm. game five. And honestly, I mean, as as commanding as some of the other games have been for Elegant, that one was a really strong statement by Charlie. It's a testament to how well these players are able to switch things up based on what their opponent's throwing down. And it's really exciting to see. Yeah, of course, now these two players going to game five. If uh, if we don't see a stage select, because they both have actually counterpicked to, uh, to Town & City at this point. So yeah. game five, most likely going to be on Town & City. I don't think we're going to see a change. <laughs> no change in scenery, no change in characters. Just taking a bit of moment for, for each other to maybe reset, and then um, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we just ran it back to town. They both won a game on it now. Um, seems like there's a lot of comfort there. 
Yeah, there is definitely comfort for uh, for both players. And like I said, the, both these players, they go way back. So at this point, it might just seem like uh, another day playing friendlies at the at a, t at a tournament station. The good old days. Yep, the good old days for sure. All right, yep, same characters. We are headed to game number five. Both players have learned a lot through the course of this set. Charlie's starting to get a little more cognizant of what Elegant's throwing throw out those tornadoes, starting to find openings to edge guard. Elegant finding ways to chase Charlie down and punish these defensive habits. To take That's really right. Here. We but we do actually to... have a, a, a stage change. And of course, these two going to uh, Pokemon Stadium 2. And Great you know, stage for both really players. What's really interesting to me is this is the first time we've seen this all day so far. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was honestly enjoying it because I know there's a lot of players that like to go to Pokemon Stadium, but we actually have some players in bracket that don't like the stage, so. Yeah, it's, it's not universally beloved. A lot of people do like it, but uh, apparently it is the right stage for the moment between these two. Okay, great parry at the ledge. going to allow Elegant to continue to pressure, but still CDK able to escape. And now the dash attack going to put Charlie off stage once again. The in-your-face fireball going to put him in a horrible position to recover from. That fireball was perfectly timed from Elegant. Immediately stuffing Charlie out right before he got the ledge, putting him in a terrible position and, you know, stealing the stock from it. Definitely stolen that stock. It's Elegant is able to overcome Charlie um, and win the set. That fireball is the MVP. Definitely. <laughs> uh, to Charlie's credit, though, he didn't let that stolen stock really get to him. He came and fired back, almost immediately got it with an F smash read after, uh, and then actually did seal it out with something else. But uh, Charlie has proven so far he's got a very strong mental game, I think, just from what I've witnessed today. There have been a lot of moments Charlie's fallen victim to that would have tilted many a lesser player. And Charlie seems 100% calm and composed and ready to adjust what he needs to to get back in the game whenever something like that happens. And of course, like I said, these two players going back and forth for years at this point. So no, no surprise that, uh, you know, we saw a kill, then a revenge kill, and now we see the the lead starting to extend a little bit for Charlie, but of course, let's remember, this is elegant. All it takes is one grab, and you can see that shield coming up, making sure that uh, that elegant is not able to get that hit confirm he needs to into a grab. Yeah, oh, nice high recovery there from Charlie. Sneaking away onto that platform, able to shield and dodge all of elegant's tricks there at the ledge. Okay, another dash attack, and that's again, Charlie finds himself off stage. A great tech. Being a spacey, you have to know how to do that. Have to. We have a new lease on life here, and uh, percents pretty close to equal stocks, however, are not. Elegant is on his winner's stock here. If he cannot make this comeback, he is <gasps> And the oh misfire! Are you kidding me? Oh, but it actually stopped him a little bit too far away from the ledge. The misfire closing out of stock for CDK, oh. but resulting in Charlie winning the set. Oh my god. Okay. The misfire giveth and the misfire taketh away. Wow. Wow, indeed. <laughs> I can think of no more fitting way for that set to end. You were already dead. I honestly, you're right. Like, for, for, uh, I would say the amount of times that Elian had stolen a stock, I, I think, like, for it to be. Like stealing a sock, but also like taking your own, getting a one for one essentially uh, in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Being the way that, that it's a little anticlimactic, but at the same time, it's fitting. 